next one is Talon and Riven. Now it's starting to get exciting. Okay, we like Riven. We, want, we like the story of Riven. Let's see, who else is coming out? We have Xerath and Rise. Wait, how is Xerath not with Azir? Or Azir hasn't been released yet. Zin, Ali, Zach, Leona. Leona the Anna makes sense. Fizz Nautilus makes sense. Heimer and uh, I can't even see who that is. Who's that? Oh, Rumble in the jungle. Caitlyn Vi. Oh yeah, because Jinx isn't released here yet. Caitlyn Vi does make sense. Wait, it was didn't he already talk about Caitlyn? I feel like he already talked about Caitlyn. Um, I'm gonna get an S on Anivia, and we still lose the game. Uh, because your the rest of your team sucked ass. <laughs> That's how it is. I feel like we already talked about Caitlyn, no? Or maybe... Huh. Alright. Oh, whatever. Anyways. Talon and Riven. Let's go. How do I get S plus on Cassid in multiple games in a row? But, like, my loss rate on the last 10 games is, like, 8 losses and 2 wins. Because, like, you're expected to carry the team. That, that's the worst part. Like, your higher MMR in the game is purposely sometimes matched up with low MMR teammates so you're supposed to carry them and then you get like a, a very good performance and yeah, because when Cass is playing it's like having a third team true he's 1v9 literally <laughs> welcome ladies and gentlemen it is Targram bringing you yet another yeah, episode of Lord League of Legends this particular episode will be focusing on two characters who are, or used to me, amongst the best that Noxus could offer. Talon, Blade, Shadow. Wait, 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 wait. Riven is from Noxus? Originally? I know she's exiled, right? But it's like... She's from Noxus? Which will kind of explain... I guess it explains why she was like a... Uh, one of the... Imprisoned gladiators in the uh, Draven cinematic. I swear she wasn't from Noxus though. I thought she was like maybe like Shurima or something. Not like Shurima, but like more desert area. Just because of like how she's dressed, you know. She's very not Noxus like dressed kind of thing, you know. She's very like yeah, whatever. Riven, the exile. And Joy. She's next. Guess she's Noxus. All right. Noxus Sign is not a place talent. for orphans. There is nobody who cares about them, nobody who's willing to spend their time looking for children that do not look promising enough. They can either survive on their own or improve their ability, or just die quietly and save everyone the trouble. Also, hey Roshanantis, I didn't even realize you were here. <laughs> the silent viewer. <laughs> Talon knows it better than anyone. He remembers no warmth of home. Loving parents. So I'm gonna have to start asking more dumb questions and uh, get more responses for you. <laughs> it's like, wait, is she from Knox? It's like, yes. All right. All right. <laughs> or any kindness shown to him. Like, are you telling me that Garen is from Demacia? What? <laughs> yes. <laughs> He's always been an outcast, left on his own to die of hunger or cold. He didn't, however, crave for company. He was doing just fine on his own. He quickly learned how the my English is not so great, so I don't type. Oh, okay, fair enough. World around no worries. Works. I think your English is good enough. He learned how to steal enough. gold from unwary people and disappear with food from the market. He was just a skinny, short boy in the middle of a crowd. It was barely possible to catch him, even if someone tried to. Yeah, because the fucker jumps over walls with no cooldown, man. Give Q a fucking cooldown. Jesus Christ. Not Q, whatever. W or E. Or if he was accidentally cool. noticed, he could always disappear into the <clears> shadows. Double. It's a vital skill on the streets of Noxus if you're planning to survive longer than a few months. We have months. Google Translate on <laughs> As the years passed, Talon learned every alley in the slums by heart. He knew where to look for secret passages, where he could hide from unwanted eyes. He was often getting beaten up or even wounded if he was found by someone who had met him previously. But he'd always found strength to stand back up and run away. Run to save his life. <laughs> he always found the strength to run away. Yeah, I mean, killing a talent is a pain, yes. Well, catching a talent is a pain, yes. And try once again, a few hours later. Makes sense. Talon had formed an alliance of sorts with another orphan from the slums, and they were working together. When one was a distraction, the other would steal everything they could. 
They've even set up a small base for themselves in the canals of the city. It would work perfectly, but Talon had been failed by his friend too many times. He couldn't trust him. That could cost him his life in this part of Noxus. When his companion had brought a pair of daggers into their hideout thinking about selling them, Talon had a different idea. He'd overheard people talking many times, sometimes local people, but mostly visitors to the city. There's only one way to survive in Noxus, <clears> he <throat> said, to have a weapon and know how to use it. Sounds. There's no time for friendship and no time for bonds. They're too easy to break and even easier to abuse. Weapons. That was the key to survival. And now, holding those two cheap daggers that had not been sharpened in ages, he felt power. All of his aggression, all of his hate that he had been holding within himself was about to explode. He did not care about what his friend had to say. Is this Captain America talent skin or some shit like that? <laughs> this the star. Too many times Talon had been put in danger because of his failures. Too many times he had to do everything on his own. He'd had enough. The weight of the daggers was a pleasant one. He smiled, rushing forward to sink a blade in his companion's throat, cutting it open. A warm blood had covered his face, and he did not mind. Killing another felt cleansing. Day after day, all he learned how to use the blades. His like I understand this is like a, a a world where like strength is everything and whatever, but it's like, bro, these like most of them are just fucking psychopaths. <laughs> were growing and with them his reputation rumors have been going amongst the assassins of noxus there was a boy somewhere in the slums who had been using a knife with precision equal to their own and perhaps even more determination than they'd ever put in any work they'd let's hire do. him he's trustworthy dude this was an he opportunity for them to gain a valuable recruit talon was not interested with their offer he'd been assaulted by many who had given him a simple choice join us or die Somehow he was not one ending up with a pair of daggers sticking out of his chest. To make sure he'd be left alone, bodies of the assassins could be found in the moat visible to everyone. This resulted in more frequent attempts at his life as revenge for those he'd murdered. Talon was not intimidated. He was waiting for them. To his surprise, however, one of the assassins he faced had mastered him in combat and pushed him against the ground, with an executioner's sword above his neck. His attacker revealed himself as General de Cotou, who had heard about the young boy from the slums and had been interested in seeing him in action. He was offered to either die at the hand of a general or live as an agent general of Duku. Noxian High Command. With no real choice, Talon chose to survive and serve Noxus under one condition. He would not be a servant of the whole High Command, but the one that bested him in combat. Yeah. Talon had served the family of de Cotou ever since, taking orders from the general. They took him to every corner of Valorum, sometimes risking his life, but he wasn't afraid. It was a great opportunity to hone his skills and learn more about his own limits. Under his command, Talon had become one of the most feared assassins of Noxus. When the general vanished, Talon had theoretically regained his freedom, but throughout his service, he gained immense respect from the general, and he was almost like a father that he'd never had. All right, so friends are useless uh, because they can be taken advantage of and you can be taken advantage because of your friends. But a random dude becoming your father is not useless. True, true. Talon is determined to find out who's arranged everyone, the general. Everyone needs a role model, right? <laughs> ...disappearance and tracking them down. His search had brought him to the gates of the Institute of War. There, he hopes to find people responsible for everything. He intends to make them pay. Okay. Riven had been brought Riven. up in a simple family of Noxus. Okay, like... Look at her clothing. Tell me she doesn't look more like a Shurima. And also like her... Uh, her skin color also looks very Shurima. She looks nothing like a Noxus person. You know? Maybe except like the, the shoulder plate. Is the most Noxus thing about her. But... She looks Shurima, straight up. Repeating words that everyone in Noxus tells to themselves. Only the strong will survive. You can be anyone, a woman, a boy, even a cripple. As long as you can find strength in yourself to stand up and be useful to your homeland, but also defend yourself, you will live. Otherwise, you might just get killed, or just simply ignored and forgotten. Riven did not want to let that happen. 
She'd always craved for greatness. She understood the ideals of Noxus and she wanted to live up to them. She loved her homeland and under no circumstances she wanted to fail it. During the early years of her military service, she'd shown great potential that had drawn the attention of commanders to her. She was determined to master a weapon that was almost her size, a massive longsword. It was ruthless, deadly weapon and not everyone could use such a blade, but yet Riven managed to use it with grace. Her true strength, however, was not in her blade, but her mind. Her almost fanatic conviction to the ideals of Noxus made her a true killing machine that would stop at nothing when she stepped onto the battlefield. She had no doubt that what she was doing was right. She feared nothing, not even death. Oh. She'd been quickly raised to a position of a poster child of Noxian spirit. Her passion was so exceptional that she had been rewarded with a rune sword crafted specially for her by the request of the High Command. The blade was enchanted with the best of Noxian sorcery, crafted I really to love this lightning, skin. broad as a shield and heavier than one. This, just what this skin just, just doesn't feel riven at all. Like, I I believe I had this skin in one of my bent accounts. <laughs> like, I just didn't like it. I love the... The... Fuck, celestial thing, whatever it's called. That's, like, my favorite skin by far. Uh... And then there's the one that like, the pulse fire is also not too bad. Wanted. She was but the celestial winged whatever really is just so good. When the war began, it was clear that it was more of an extermination than a conflict. Ionia had no regular army to stand against Noxus, nothing to protect themselves from the war machines that had been bought here straight from Zorn. Riven had been expecting a fair fight, but instead she just got manslaughter. Her main task had been changed, and now she was spending most time dealing with orders and passing them on. It was not what she trained for. While okay. slowly advancing deeper into the island, Riven's company had been ambushed by Ionian guerrillas. Her co I know he said guerrilla, like guerrilla fighters. <laughs> They've been ambushed by guerrillas, bro. Oh, I don't know why I find it funny. Jesus Christ, I'm Company an idiot. Had been traveling through fog covered land, marching in thick mud. It had been slow and tiring. The Ionian guerrillas are attacking. Approaching. Riven knew she had to stay focused on the task, but she was just thinking about recent events. Ionia was supposed to surrender. And yet, they were still fighting back. When they'd reached the valley that there was the goal, as it could allow war machines crafted by Singe Such to pass further skin, into Ionia, man. when the troops had entered the valley, Riven noticed someone approaching them. It was just a little girl. Harmless, it would seem. Annie? She was, however, a good distraction, allowing for Ionian men to jump out of their hiding and start a fight. Noxus had the equipment advantage over Ionians, but they'd been outnumbered the troops, and most of the soldiers had been surprised, not entirely sure what was happening. Riven tried to fight the Ionians, shouting out orders. She was trying to get her men in defensive formation, but it was hopeless. All they could do was defend themselves and hope that their training would be enough to push those desperate peasants back. She raised a flare to let the rest of the Noxian army know about the ambush. Her plan was to cut herself away out and save as many people with her as she could. But before she could react, a glowing ball had exploded in front of her. has conquered some part of the Shurima, so her real origin might come from Shurima. It's possible, and then capture it. Oh, okay. Yeah, you are right. They did, they did conquer random areas. Okay, yeah. Okay, so that would make more sense then. Yeah. To her, blinding right. her for a few long seconds. All she could Still, hear. like, but even then, like... Because I believe she was born into Nox, so that means they conquered Shurima throughout, like, before that. So it's like she retained her people's um, culture to an extent, but she became... Like, the, the reason I'm saying, like, she doesn't look like a Nox is because she doesn't, like... It, she's not dressed, like, she doesn't feel like a Noxus person, you know, like... All, like fucking daggers and weapons everywhere or like they're just fucking like they look evil and shit like that like Riven just doesn't fit that image in my head so that's why I feel like it's so weird that she's Noxus even if like yeah maybe she did come from a conquered Shurima place but it's like the Noxus um societal you know s 
pressure, like how they act and stuff like that, would have affected her from birth. Like what what would seem cool to a kid would be something like uh, Noxus um, clothing, for example, right? So it's like, and she doesn't wear any of them. That's why I'm saying like she just doesn't look uh, Noxus. It was ringing in her ears as she tried not to fall down. Riven was not sure what that was, but before she could look down for a place where the ball had come from, another head appeared, knocking both Ionians and Noxians down. The battlefield was chaos. Some men had still been fighting, others had been trying to run. Some have just been kneeling down and scratching their faces. That's when Riven realized what happened. The Zornite machines known as Melters had already unleashed their toxic barrage and more was still coming. The ground beneath was being torn with explosions as she ran away, watching as soldiers fight to draw a breath as their skin starts slowly turning red. Riven was a... In, is it me or does her foot look extremely fucking weird? Look at this shit. What is this? Since when does your toe do that? Why is her toe like one, two, three, four, so four toes? Why is the fifth one here? Who drew this? <laughs> what is this? As <laughs> an officer, her armor was better than most. It was probably what saved her life. I don't think you can see it very well, though. I guess. Actually, yeah, I can see it in the stream. But the image of her well. own men, her soldiers What's dying, her such toe? a terrible death had been burnt into her mind. Her confidence and conviction had slowly disappeared, turning into fear and anger. She's been counted dead by the High Command, which only helped her cause. Riven has shattered her sword and started a new life. She wanted to prove that Noxian ideals are still good, oh, she exiled herself. but the way they are executed is not acceptable. She still loves her homeland and is willing to fight for it. The one that she despises are sitting on their seats in the High Command. Uh -huh. Riven will serve them no longer. See, that doesn't make sense. Like, it's like... I love the people of my country, but I hate my country kind of thing, right? Riven is from Noxus, but got sent to invade Ionia. Her clothes are like that because it's war-torn and she was living in Ionia for a period of time. Oh, okay. Okay, I see. So the clothes we see her in is like after the fact. That's why she's not dressed in like Noxus clothes. And we don't have a, like, well, we have a skin of her in Noxus uh, garment, but it's like it's not her default skin so i guess that's why it didn't feel uh like that like she fits okay fair enough i'll go with it. yeah that that makes sense um but yeah i like i don't agree with like the philosophy is so weird though of like i don't like the government of my country but i like the people so it's like i'm gonna like <sighs> It's it's complex, I guess. Like it's it's uh you know uh, oh, fighting for Noxus on her own terms in the League of Legends. And that's all we prepared for you this week. Like to say that you like you've it's like, it and... how can you say that you really like your country if you hate the people running it kind of thing, right? And I'm not talking about like current governments, like you know democratic and like where you. You change parties every four years or so i'm not talking about like that example i'm talking about the example of like this the like noxus is built on strength right the str the strong rule right so it's like so you like that part of noxus you just don't like who the strong people were who who started to rule right so it's like the philosophy doesn't change the people are also the same kind of things like it's not like there's like multiple parties fighting for supremacy it's like no the strong rule that is the rule of noxus and she's like I, yeah but i love noxus i just but i don't like the government it's like so you want to change the government so you don't love noxus kind of thing you know it's like you're going against what noxus stands for in that regard that's kind of like how i, I understood what he said there was like I, she still loves noxus but she like doesn't like who's running it or something like that it's uh uh, it's politics it is what it is anyways i'll go to the next one 